Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, Joe on Joe listeners, it's me, Joe Slepsky. And I'm back and you're back. This is the uh, the quarantine re-releases of our original tracks going back four years. And I hope you're enjoying these as much as I'm enjoying reliving them, warts and all. I, I, uh, I, I think you can easily hear where I'm finding myself and finding what the show turned out to be. So I'm really happy to share these with you guys. Again, we pulled these back from behind the Patreon wall and I wanted to make them available to everybody during this time to share and give and listen and have fun, especially because G.I. Joe's back on YouTube now. So, yeah, so I appreciate that. And you guys uh, can always follow me at Joe and Joe Pod on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Let me know what you think of some of these early episodes, how terrible they are, or how funny they are, or how awful they are. And we're starting recording back up again, so reach out to me. Let me know, Joe and Joe Pod at gmail.com. Let me know if you want to join me for an episode. I believe we're going to jump into G.I. Joe Extreme very, very soon. So without any further ado, here is the OG track from Joe on Joe four years ago. Enjoy. You are listening to the Joe on Joe podcast. The only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Yo, Joe, and welcome back to the second episode, the second episode of Joe on Joe podcast. So we're going to get right to it. We're going to jump into episode two of G.I. Joe, again, from the uh, wonderful, wonderful Shop Factory box set. Uh, And this is episode two of the five-part premiere, Slaves of the Cobra Master. If you remember in Cobra Strikes... Uh, they you you're introduced to the Cobra's nefarious plan. Well, you're introduced to everybody basically. Like this is the first episode, so you got to meet everybody. But um, Cobra has a nefarious plan called the Mass Device, which is basically a giant matter transporter, which is amazing. Like let's okay, we'll get into that. Um, and I think there's a recap on this episode, so I won't go into it too much. But when we left it, our hero uh, Duke, which obviously they're setting way up as he's the lead of the show, Duke was kidnapped. Um. By oh, I just thought of something. Okay, we got to get into this episode. I'm just gonna hit play. So if you're watching along, we're hitting play on the DVD right now. Slaves of the Cobra Master. Again, going to the fantastic title sequence. First thing you see are Hawk's baby blue eyes. Hawk's like a like Paul Newman. I want Paul Newman to play Hawk, a young Paul Newman. Um, you get the vamp. You get all the Cobra. See, I think. You were supposed to have a ton of, like, Cobra soldiers. So you, you were supposed to buy, like, you know, one of each of the, of, the, of, the, of the characters, the figures. And then you were supposed to buy, like, 18 Cobra soldiers. And so you round out your army. And I, I never did that. And I don't, there, I don't know what that, I don't know, I, it's not an OCD thing, obviously, because I, I didn't, like, complete it. But, like... My comic collection. I have thirty thousand comic books. Thirty. I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. I have thirty six thousand comic books, and I have less than like three hundred duplicates. I do not have a lot of duplicates on my comic books. Uh, and so when and it, and it when it came to toys, I was the same way. We're here. Okay, we're getting our recap now. So if you if you're watching along, you're seeing they they kidnap the uh, Eiffel Tower. They kidnap Duke. Well, is there no end to their kidnapping? Uh. So I never wanted more than one thing. I just wanted one of everything. And that's it's crazy and, and creepy. And you got uh, your gold frankincense and murder. Um, so Duke is fighting this giant, like, Conan-esque monster guy that's, of course, being mind-controlled. This just dawned on me. So this show started... The first episode, what's the first thing we saw last time? We saw Duke and Scarlet being cozy, right? So it's a, you know, it's a young kid saying, hey, here's a, you know, here's a relationship. Here's a, you know, couple, young couple there and they might be in love. I don't know. They're, they're definitely interested in each other. It's a workplace romance. Cut to Duke's away. One, he's on a mission, first of all, Duke. All right. He's away for like five minutes and he's making googly eyes with the savage lady here. Definitely, obviously, they're setting him up as a as a raccoon tour, but um, you know what about what about Scarlet? 
uh, it's kind of a cad move. I don't, I don't know. you know, maybe I'm applying, you know, today's morals on it. And real quick, if you notice, if you look at their uh, joysticks, they're totally Atari joysticks. They even have the f- freaking button on them. Uh, they have the Atari thumb button. Like, the the characters that, they're, the humans that they're controlling are going to then shoot something out of their eyes or something. Like, what does that button do? Like, what could it possibly do? Maybe it's the on-off switch. Maybe he hit it. Maybe that's what it did. It's the on-off switch. But it definitely can't be a trigger button. What's going to happen? Um... I love that Des- I love that Destro pulls the move of I'm just I'm I'm just going to let my character I don't know if you called him Duke by name. I'm going to let Duke fight his own battle. <laughs> it's awesome because it shows like respect. Like uh, yeah, this guy's pretty good. He can he can handle your giant Conan looking monster guy. And it's also uh, you know a kick in the kick in the mask to uh, Cobra Commander too. It's pretty great. Um, Cobra has a gigantic size mass device, and this guy's got like a little midget mass device, which is great. First element we need like a desktop a size mass device. Can be found near Just the ready to go. Circle. So now, okay, so now we're getting into that this is the kind of adventure that comic books excelled in, and the comic books did, uh, team books specifically, team books did forever, starting with the Justice Society. Um, back in the 40s where you would have a team of heroes and 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 really I touched on this a little bit last episode uh for me one of the main drawing drawing points and 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 appeal of G.I. Joe is that every character's individual right so they all have their own unique look unique personality unique specialization right they're a team of superheroes it's, it's, it's totally what they are. You know, it's it's not, it's no revelation or secret, but that's what they are. Everyone's a superhero with their own superpower. You know, one of them, one of their superpowers happens to be, uh, you know, I'm a sailor with a parrot on my shoulder, or I'm a ninja, or I'm a, I'm a lady ninja with an awesome crossbow, or uh, I'm a firefighter, or I blow torch stuff up, blow torch, um, or I'm a mine diffusion expert. You know, like everyone has their specialty. Just like a team like the Avengers or the X Men or the Justice League, uh, you know, there's or or the Legion of Superheroes. You know, the Legion even had a rule <laughs> that you couldn't duplicate someone's powers, and that's pretty much what GI Joe was. So it's what was great about it is is there weren't any duplications. A couple years later, they started to do that, kind of freshen people up. Like when they brought in Roadblock, he was a heavy machine gunner, and they already had road and they already read rock and roll, which um. Roadblock's totally an upgrade to rock and roll. No offense, rock and roll. You're pretty awesome, but Roadblock's so great that he just trumps everything. Um, but that's what's so fantastic about J.J. And I, th- and I think what captures uh, the hearts and minds of, of kids is, even if they don't love comic books, it's just that diversity and that, um, you know, that, listen, that's a huge thing everyone's talking about these days with uh, – Okay, and she just slipped him a piece of, by the way, like like gold foil. It looks like like chewing gum. He's gonna use that to escape. I love it. Um, the 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 principle of seeing yourself in someone is so appealing to kids and so appealing to uh, you know fans who want to have their their adventure, right? So seeing yourself represented on screen, right? And that's what everyone's talking about these days and, and whether it's um race or gender or you know style or whatever you you got to hit it all well that's what's great about chia joe is that they hit it all there's some i mean this is 1983 there is something for everybody here you know uh if you watch uh, a cartoon that i also loved but a cartoon like like he-man that um great cartoon but i you know it, the diversity there was in the crazy like the crazy bad guys and there's you're not a snake man or you're not a beast man or you're not a moss man or you're not a you know falcon man but here in gi joe you 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 might be there's major blood you might be australian you know or uh barbecue was from boston you might be a kid from boston you might love barbecue because he was from boston and he talked with your accent or you know you might be a young black kid and you love stalker you know uh, you might be a young blonde ninja whose parents got killed and you're mute and you had your facial deformed and you're sitting at home you're like, there's no one on TV that represents me. And all of a sudden, Snake Eyes comes along. 
And you're like, oh my God, he's just like me. So that's what's great. That's honestly, truly what I think is such a winning formula for this show. Um, and I think that's something that the people who make the movies completely forgot about. Not completely, I guess. You get into, you know, the cast the rock and all that stuff but what they what they missed when they did the movies and i enjoy them i told you know i will i'll probably do a do one of these episodes for those when we get to them um, i enjoy the movies but they all look the same there's a visual element too there's a visual element of differentiating your heroes that was completely lost when they translated it to the big screen um, and it's such a, such an easy, it would have been such an easy, easy thing to do. Instead, they gave us, uh, everyone was dressed like snake eyes. And it's just like, you, you, whoever the production design on that was, whoever the costumer, whoever made those choices, I don't know who, you just missed the point. Like, you missed the whole point of the show, of the appeal of the show, you know? Like, it, you got to make everyone look different. And it's not just because you have a, you know, actor of this ethnicity or this race or this gender it's it's the character themselves uh specifically there was that moment when they cut to the they go through the pit and uh, this is in the first movie and you see all the rest of the gi joe team training and that's and it's awesome you're like oh, okay they're part of a bigger thing man every single one of those characters in the background should have been in a different outfit and i'm talking they could have been in different t-shirts they could have been you know had someone dressed in a football shirt like uh bazooka you know someone in a green camo like stalker or so you know like just just everyone should have been dressed up as the you just get a bunch of cosplayers you could have done it as cosplayers and it would have been amazing and fans would have lost their minds it would have been Next so great but they didn't do that power. and that's i We're think that's there's a huge so missed opportunity gentle. anyway back to it cobra commander he just kidnapped half the russian army and if you're looking at the timeline this is before rocky 4 this is before sylvester stallone you know, ended the Cold War with a couple punches. You know, if I can change, if you can change. So, Cobra Commander's not doing a lot of good to help uh, U.S. Russian relations right here. The mass device is not a toy for your amusement. These repeated demonstrations of its power Destro, have almost exhausted our supply of catalytic elements. I have absolutely one is a little lip indentation because he's got a metal face, always gives him a Hitler stash. I had absolutely no idea that he's supposed to be Scottish. Okay, so first first episode we talked about how I had no idea that he was wearing an open shirt and that that was, that was supposed to be his bare chest. So I just assumed Destro was a black dude. And then I had no idea, no idea that he was supposed to be Scottish. Because uh, he ain't Scottish. Uh, so I think Destro is a good guy to focus on for today's uh, today's episode. I'm going to flip through my file card and see if I got Destro's file card. If not, I'll look him up. Um, so you got uh, Snow Job, which is one of the best, best, the best names for a toy for children. Snow Job. Um, so you got Snow Job and Scarlet. And um, is that... I think that's Tripwire, and I think that's Flash. And it's with the green shirts, it's a little hard to tell. Again, guys, I'm not an expert. I just love it. Um, um, oh, earlier, one of the things I was saying that they're doing right now with this uh, episode that I think kind of, they, they just got straight from comics, which was fantastic, is they have a, um, they have a mission – and they have to split up and go on the mission, you know. Um, I think they do it a little more, uh, like, at the same time in uh, the, the second miniseries. So right now we're just following this mission. But um, but that's what they did in, um, you know, that's what they did in um, Justice Society all the time. And they did in Justice League all the time. And for years they did in the Justice League. So you'd have a big problem and they would, all the heroes would be gathered. All the heroes would be gathered in the you know, Justice League satellite. And uh, they'd be like, okay, well, yeah, we could send Superman to do everything and kind of mop everything up, but instead we're just going to take you three, Batman, you and you and the Flash, go stop this guy, and Wonder Woman, you and uh, Martian Manhunter, go stop this guy. And they're doing the same thing here, which is really smart, and it allows you to tell like these big-scale stories with these small personal moments. Uh, 
and that's what they're doing. So they've given you, they've outlined this really easy plot for kids to follow. We've got these three elements. We need to get them. We need to go to these three locations to get them. And here's, these are the teams that are going to do it. And it's, it's, it's simple. It breaks it down. Um, you know, it's like, it's kind of like it. So it's, so they're not, what am I trying to say? Like, they're not throwing everything at you at once, which is fantastic. Um, not everyone is interested in like teams like the Legion of Superheroes, which I happen to be a huge fan of. You know, like there's a lot of sometimes you need to just focus on. I think good storytelling is you just focus on, um, you know, a few characters part of and show that they're a part of a larger, you know, part of that larger unit, and that's the appeal. So here we go, Destro. So we all know Destro by now. He's got the metal mask. He's a Scottish arms dealer. But what do we really know about him, right? What do we really know? Well, as of G.I. Joe Order of Battle, published in uh, 1987, according to his file card, we know nothing. It's a a birthplace unknown, even though uh, it was established that he was uh, part of like a Scottish uh, clandestro. You know, uh, it's so funny. So it says Destro is okay. Does Destro is the faceless power behind Mars, the military armament research system, largest manufacturer, state-of-the-art weaponry. To Destro, war is man's most natural state. The fittest survive, and the greatest technological advances are made. Which is actually, it's actually that's actually true. Okay, so that's actually true. Let's take here a second. Unfortunately, technology advances when we're at war, which is kind of a crappy thing to do, you know, to think about. But it's true. The most advances are when all the money's funneled into the war machine, and they come up with, uh, you know, with various. Uh, advancements which then eventually filter into the private sector and so then we have you know wonderful cars with those with great gear shifts and i don't know anything listen i don't know anything about cars but all this stuff that was developed in world war ii eventually made it into the car industry right because they needed it for for battle now here we go real quick back to the show here we go duke getting cozy with this cute young co-ed giving her something to now he Duke knows there's a, a tracker in that ring, but you know what else that is? That's a leave behind. Duke's Duke's giving her a leave behind. He's gonna come back and get it and say, "What's up, ladies?" All right. So Destro maintains a luxurious lifestyle around the world. Destro provides high tech arms to any side able to meet his price and will incite war where it does not exist. He dons his silver battle mask, it's a family tradition, and enters battle himself, either with Cobra Command, Destro is their major weapon supplier, or against them if it's better for business, which is fascinating. When I was a kid, that was fascinating. I'm like, wait a minute, is he a bad guy or isn't he? Like, whose side is he on? Is he running his own shadow operation? And that's what was great. Uh, Larry Hama did a ton of that stuff, where Destro would show up at the pit and be like, what's up? I want to help you against Cobra Commander because he's nuts. Uh, and so fascinating to have a character have your your probably your second, if not your main bad guy, because obviously Cobra Commander is supposed to be the main bad guy, but the guy that's pretty much there every step of the way, he's kind of a shades of gray guy. Yeah, he's an a hole, but to think that he would occasionally go against Cobra Commander, that's awesome. Destro respects the G.I. Joe team for their combat skills and experience, but he abhors them. He abhors them for wasting such skills to maintain peace. He's totally dedicated to seeing them undermined, subverted, or destroyed with an exclamation mark. So I take that back. He's, you know, he's kind of a jerk. Kind of a jerk. Um, so as of that writing, apparently, at least as far as they wanted their readers to know, uh, they didn't want readers to know that uh, Destro was part of Clan McCullough. McCullough. Um, you know, with that sc- thick Scottish brogue, but it doesn't sound like Scottish brogue to me. It just sounds like a, 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 a African American dude. All right. This might have been my first exposure to radiation when I was a kid. The, uh, the concept of it. We got Snow Job telling us about radiation, glowing in the dark. Snake Eyes is about to, about to uh, you know, help him out. Is radiation apparently is purple, which is great. Oh, I actually I can't get into that, but oh man, this is this is straight up. Uh, 
oh, this is straight up Wrath of Khan stuff. Wait a minute. That's right. I would have seen Wrath of Khan. Star Trek II was before this. Look oh, at this that. is awesome. Okay, so they totally Way took out. this from Star Trek II, the Wrath of Khan, and I would have seen that. So, yeah. So, you're watching this, and you're like, oh, my God. It's just like when Spock sacrificed himself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, real quick, I'm going to jump back to... Oh, there's... Man, they've seen their Snake Eyes. It's in the comic. For those uninitiated, in the comic, Snake Eyes and Scarlet were an item. In the cartoon... Scarlet was an item with Duke, which I always thought was a betrayal because Snake Eyes is the real man. Um, but you can't do uh, have one of your leads on your cartoon be a mute, faceless ninja. It's just never going to work. It's they they can barely make it work in comics. Snake Eyes has had multiple series of his own that it was just the one series they recently did. It just literally turned into Storm Shadow, and like at issue like eight or nine or something, they just started calling it Storm Shadow, and it was the Storm Shadow comic book which bothered me i always thought you could totally do a snake eyes comic but i don't know well yeah listen jjo has enough trouble keeping a regular series going so maybe maybe i'm wrong so now we fast forward to the uh, Dr- uh devil's do uh battle files update on destro and sure enough this is from 2002 sure enough they give his name, James McCullen, the, what is it, the 24th. James McCullen, the 24th. Jesus. His lineage stretches back to the 1600s, where his family were reputable weapon suppliers in Europe. One of his descendants was punished for his transgressions and forced to wear a steel mask over his face. So they're stealing the man in the iron mask, the, uh, the Dumas, the uh, uh, Three Musketeers stuff. Choosing to wear the mask with pride rather than humiliation became tradition throughout the family. Each head of the clan donning the mask. They re- later established what would one day become Mars, the Military Armament Research Syndicate. And that eventually becomes Destro. Fantastic. So he's Scottish, right? Never got that from the cartoon. Although I think they do, at one point, they do go to like his Scottish Highland Castle, and it still didn't drain into my uh into my head i'm pretty sure they're yeah they're fairly positive they go to his castle and it's haunted with ghosts or something we'll get to that episode he doesn't look but good, Dad. I no is he going to make it his vital signs are weak cover um, girl but duke's no ordinary man full emergency team ready that's a great illustration of destro by joe benitez looks good duke hurt in battle foreshadowing uh the gi joe movie duke's always getting in trouble um you know, years later, Duke would get his or Destro would get his own Iron Grenadiers and the um, the and his own kind of kind of uh, his own shadow military, really, which is funny because it's hinted at on that first card, and they eventually did do it. and And I remember from the toy collecting, I was confused at that. I was like, "Well, wait a minute, why aren't wait these are is like Destro his own set of Cobras? I don't know." So Cobra Commander now has kidnapped all the world leaders and outfitted all of them with those funky headbands. And he and Destro are dropping uh, ultimatums all over the world. Snake Eyes was sealed into the radiation, presuming to die just like uh, just like uh, Spock in Wrath of Khan. Except Scarlet should have been like, Destro! I guess she would have said that in a more feminine voice. It's no use. You know, what I, can I say? I can't remember anything. So Duke has amnesia. Nothing except, except a face. A girl. A beautiful face. You gotta remember, man. A beautiful Somehow, girl. Some way you must. See, Duke remembers a beautiful girl, which has got to be a slap in the face to Scarlet. Just saying. <laughs> Cut to Destro maniacally laughing. Love it. And we go to commercial break. Man. Uh, will return you know. after these messages. You know, our next episode, Cobra Robots Blast. Farewell and now again, we're getting a little tease of what's going to happen next episode. And you look, well, ooh, there's the radioactive snake eyes. It's kind of a spoiler. Because as far as I'm, I'm watching this, as far as I'm concerned, snake eyes just died. That's kind of a spoiler. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, the worms of death. That's worms of death sounds like something my dog just had. We had to give him pills for. Um, so there it is, episode two, Joe and Joe podcast. Once again, we got the great uh, end credits. Thank you all for listening. 
Uh, remember to uh, you know follow us Facebook and Instagram and social media and Twitter us up and let me know what you want to see on the show or who you want to see. Oh, and uh, if you're out there listening and you want to join me, if you're on the LA area and uh, join me for an episode, I'd love to talk to you, Joe. One of the reasons I do this solo is I don't have any friends that are give a sh- crap about you, Joe. So if you're out here, you're listening and you want to join me, absolutely. Even if you don't know anything about Joe, just join us. We'll talk Joe. It'll be great. All right, so until next time, yo, Joe.